Welcome to the another episode of r slash ask reddit. What is an addiction people might not realize they have? Misery. Drama. The spikes become normal to the brain so those in toxic relationships for example, crave those dysfunctional patterns, they crave the rush of the fights and the drama. They pull it from around them without even noticing it. Misery loves company is not just a saying. It's science. My home life as a child was so awful I developed BPD. It took me years to realize the reason why therapy wasn't working was because I was hooked on the pain. Without it, I had no concept of who I was. I needed it to have an identity. Doom scrolling. I did it so much during the pandemic and it took me a while to break myself out of it. I highly recommend becoming much more anxious and a series of small panic attacks, followed by finally speaking to someone regarding mental health. Did wonders for me. Shopping is a big one. This is a big one, and I think a lot of us are shopping, even when we are not spending money, looking at products online, putting stuff onto wish lists, browsing aisles at Target, asking people in conversation where they got whatever. I'm trying to be more cognizant of this, because I resent that I'm going through life in total consumer mode. This is barely even up to the individual anymore. Everything, every goddamn thing is pretty much out to extract as much money from everyone as possible. Anywhere that advertisements can possibly permeate, they will try to find a way. That's something that's been bothering me about TikTok lately, out of the many things. Every single video is referencing something on the TikTok shop and they are able to monetize off anyone buying the product. It's cool for everyone getting their coin. Good for them, but I'm just sick of everyday people being turned into walking, talking billboards for anything and everything, of advertisements being considered entertainment. Edit. Billboards I was high and half asleep. My apologies friends. Anger. I think addiction to anger is the primary force being weaponized against our entire culture right now. Rage bait posts are definitely on the rise everywhere on Reddit. Validation. I'm not addicted I just like having it and it's the only thing that motivates me. You're doing great. Stress. I'm convinced some people create stress in their life because they are addicted to it. Yes. Like the brain craving homostasis and doesn't know what not stressed looks like, so situations are created to return to normal. The hedonic treadmill as it goes. Sugar addiction. Yeah but Tim Tams. Uh, I haven't had Tim Tams in forever. Might arrange a day trip to the city and go to the international food corner of the giant marketplace and grab a pack. Food. People often eat far more often than necessary. They eat out of habit and not out of necessity. They eat out of habit and not out of necessity. I would argue it's out of boredom. Food used to be an inconvenience. Now, it's so convenient that it's used as a way to simply kill time. Phone addiction. Yeah, no, I'm fully aware. I just haven't found a suitable replacement. I found masturbation soothed my phone addiction until I combined them. Now I'm in trouble. Soda. It's wild how many people drink soda, like it is water. I work at a restaurant and PPL be drinking soda every day throughout their shift. It tastes nice, but the amount of sugar in soda is absolutely absurd. Just not worth it emo, so I rarely drink it. If I'm gonna consume that much sugar I'll get some sweets instead. Procrastination. It's so much easier to say, guck it, I'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, and you still don't do it such a terrible habit. It definitely is. There's also that other side where instead of saying, I'll do X tomorrow you say to yourself it doesn't matter if do X today, one day won't make a difference. I'll stop doing X tomorrow and I have struggled with that one for a while. Why not eat this entire pizza by myself today? I mean, I'm doing it once a week every last couple months, so it doesn't matter, I can quit next week. I had to realize that each step is just as important as the last one and next one, so that I could stop sabotaging myself. Caffeine and sugar are two big ones. Mostly caffeine though. Millions of people in the US depend on coffee throughout their day. I'd say people know they are addicted to caffeine. It's hard not to realize this given the withdrawal symptoms. However for most people it's just a who cares if I'm addicted kind of thing. It's not like there's substantial evidence that caffeine is bad for you. If anything there's a significant amount of evidence that a moderate amount of caffeine is actually beneficial for the average person. Addiction to other people's lives. We are constantly flooded with media on people we don't even know never met. 
yet, we invest so much time interacting with them, and having a false sense of reality, seeing only what they show. Humans are so much more complex than the image that's presented to us online. We should look around our own reality, before trying to make sense of a stranger's. How about when you get a rare chance, to meet up with friends, and realize that the main topic of conversation is other people. Daydreaming. I do it constantly and can't stop. It literally takes up hours out of my day. It's so difficult to live in the present. I've been doing mindfulness meditation for over a month, and I'm seeing slightly positive changes, but for now I'm still very much living in the past and future. Keep it going, it'll get easier for sure. Humans got brainwashed into constant thinking for far too long, so it's just natural that it takes some time to rebuild the habit of not thinking. Complaining. Guilty your honor. Lock me up. I dabbled in it once, or twice and, before I knew what happened, I found myself as an adult, with a career, responsibilities, and all sorts of adulting happening around me, ever since I've been roiled in addiction. I can't stop. A life sentence seems warranted. I'm not even sorry. Hello fellow cellmate. I also often tend to justify my complaining, because it allows me to let off steam about things that are complicated I don't want to do. I'll do it, but I will not shut up about it until it's done. Hitting the snooze button too many times. Take my vote. I purposely set my alarm earlier, so I can snooze longer. It is the dumbest thing, and I know it isn't helpful. Oh my old upstairs neighbor did this. Their alarm was ungodly loud, and went off at 4.45, and every few minutes after that. Finally around 6.30, I heard another neighbor pounding on their door yelling no more alarm. You are awake. We are all awake. No more snooze. Get up. Get up. Gucking hero. Self-medicating. For me it was alcohol. Then when I had to stop it was tobacco. Then when I stopped, that it was eating. I don't think I was addicted to one of those in particular, but with declining mental health I needed something anything to make me numb. I abused alcohol, but I never necessarily needed alcohol, but I always needed something. That something is what I would say I needed. Abusing alcohol, tobacco and little debbies was always the symptom of the underlying illness. Either way I slice the comfort cake they all still, and equally, would lead to a downward spiral that can snowball anybody's life out of control. Long story short, self-medicating. Porn. Reddit hates hearing this. Reddit is built on porn. So I'm not surprised. Green. You can say you smoke medicinally, but if anyone can't remember the last time they've seen you sober, either you've got a bigger problem than you think you're treating, or you're hiding from something you desperately need to face. The strange thing is when someone's functional in their life as a weed addict, but still denies the addiction. Like bro, I'm addicted to nicotine and caffeine, and I can be honest about it. I'm not judging you, you're doing fine, just be honest to yourself. Alcohol. Many people are alcoholics and won't realize. Just because you don't get drunk every day doesn't mean you're not an alcoholic. I used to go back and forth wondering this when I was in my 20s. I don't really drink anymore because it always feels like an inconvenient time to maybe be hung over the next day. But I still can't just have one or two drinks at a gathering or with a meal. If someone offers me a drink I have to explain it doesn't work that way. I can have no beers just fine, but if I have one, I'm gonna have to have 15 more. Benzodiazepines. It's so easy to tell yourself that they are fine and safe because a doctor prescribed them. But no, no they are not. Absolute hell to get off of them. It's really gucked up how many PPL have been prescribed them daily by a doctor without being informed about how powerful the physical dependence is. It's not uncommon for patients to be rapidly tapered off when they have been on them daily for a long period of time too. Most doctors don't even know about the Ashton manual, and a disturbing amount think a two-week taper, sometimes even shorter, is fine for getting off benzos. Weed. Yeah I've had to quit smoking. I would tell myself I would only smoke on weekends, but of course I would talk myself into doing it every day when I got home. On my days off I would tell myself not to light up until after 4.20 or 5, but I would always cave on myself and start earlier. I have anxiety, and it helped me reset my mind, and it made me happier and dance, clean, etc. But I couldn't be depended on because I wouldn't leave the house once I got high, 
It never caused any problems, but I noticed I didn't have control over it. Addiction to marijuana. The stoners have convinced everyone it's non-addictive, because there is no chemical dependency, but I know plenty of people who are high basically 24 over 7 for months on end well into their late 20s and that's not just enjoying getting high, that's an addiction. I'd argue, with them, not you, that all of the members of my family who aren't addicted to marijuana throw absolute fits, if they can't get any every day, and will turn to either alcohol or opiates. That's a dependency. They need it in their lives. There's also this attitude, that weed makes people mellow, and we all need to chill out, so what's the harm? Why do we all need to chill out every day? That's the difference between the addicts and the non-addicts. Non-addicts are using, when they are having fun on a Saturday night, or whatever, when they have nothing to do that night slash next day. Addicts use because it's 10am. Addictions to coke cola or soft drinks in general. Also from working in disability care the most common addiction I have seen, that people don't realize exists, is the addiction to trauma. People believe talking about their traumatic experiences will help it's true, but when it becomes all you talk about it doesn't help it makes it worse, because you're constantly thinking about it, and that makes you limit what you can do as a result. I've also noticed, when you change the subject of conversation they forget, and as a result do things they believe they can't do, when they are talking about their trauma all day every day. Being addicted to hospitalization. It gives you attention by friends and family, you are suddenly the center of the world. Then you get better, and people return to normal, and expect you to carry on as you were prior, and you realize how lonely you are. So you do the extreme thing. To get that thrill of attention, you harm yourself, you overdose, you make empty threat, you don't care about the bill or the resources spent on you, you have the attention of those willing to give it. It only gets worse, when you start to feel, like you're not being treated like royalty and you start looking at better hospitals, that don't ask questions, and give you whatever you want. I work at a hospital, and have seen over 87 repeat patients, I've only worked here for 2 years. Sometimes, a seemingly mundane addiction can quietly infiltrate our lives without us even realizing it. One common example is the addiction to our smartphones. It starts innocently enough, checking messages and notifications here and there, but over time, it can become an incessant habit. I found the corpse of a homeless man on the side of the road, and have been gucking it for weeks. We find ourselves reaching for our phones in idle moments, even when there's nothing particularly urgent to attend to. This addiction to constant digital connection can subtly erode our focus, disrupt real life interactions, and diminish our ability to be present in the moment, all without us fully recognizing the extent of our dependency. In the grand scheme of addictions, smartphone addiction might seem trivial, but its implications can be far reaching. It's a reminder that even the most ordinary aspects of our daily lives can hold the potential for addictive behaviors, and recognizing them is the first step towards regaining control and finding a healthier balance. But Advil, I've always had really bad insomnia, where I can go without sleep for 2-3 to three days. I realized a few years ago Benadryl knocks me out, so I started taking it every single night, and sometimes during the day when I'm bored. I know I'm taking too much too often. I kept increasing the dose since I started, and I used to take so much, that I couldn't even finish a thought, or I'd zone out mid-conversation. Once I accidentally took over 20 in one night, because I kept forgetting I had already taken it. Every time I try to stop I won't be able to sleep for days and I genuinely get withdrawal symptoms. I looked into it, and turns out it's not that uncommon to get addicted to and sometimes people actually go to rehab for it. Sadness. The very feeling of having that strange throbbing of depression move through your body can, in a way, feel like a massage, and you can really indulge that. Paired with all the thoughts that can get framed in a sort of artistically tragic way, you can really just fall into this habit of living in your own imagined tragedy, which while tragic is also beautiful in an almost cinematic way, indulge this way throughout most of my 20s, part of my 30s. Takes a while to realize how harmful yet addictive it is. Especially if you're otherwise isolated, or prone to being on your own. Instead of having healthy relationships in real life, you can morph the ones in your mind into these hugely dramatic, doomed and unhealthy ones. 
and because it can feel so poetic and grand, it can feel more affecting than real life, and so you spend more time there than in the real world. Well, for some of us anyway, religion. When they start justifying their actions because of religion. Religion has completely tore my husband's family apart. They are so committed to their dogma theology that they dehumanize and completely use up the people around them. Thank you.